All right, so we're going to move on to looking at triple integrals in other coordinate systems. We're going to begin with the so-called cylindrical coordinate system. Um, before we kind of get into the details, let's just look at the following example. Um, here's a triple integral computing a volume, right? I know it's computing a volume because the function I'm integrating, if you like, I mean, there's nothing written, but really we know that just means we're, we're integrating one. Okay, so this is a volume. Now, one thing we might do, and, and before we even bother drawing anything, is realize that, hey, we could, you know, we can do the z integral straight away. Okay. So these parts don't change. And so then we have upper limit minus lower limit. Right? And then dy dx. Okay? Now, there's a couple things here that are probably telling you that we shouldn't be doing this in rectangular coordinates, right? Um, we should really convert to polar. Uh, one is you see the appearance of things like x squared plus y squared. The other is you look over here at these limits and you say, what kind of, what kind of region am I dealing with? In fact, what you know, what is the region whose volume I'm computing here? Why don't we take a look at that? So let's draw the picture, see what we're dealing with, and go from there. Okay, well, x goes from minus 2 to 2. Um, y, so we know that this is just a semicircle, right? This is the top half of a circle of radius 2. So in fact, we know what we're dealing with in, in the xy plane. We're just dealing with this semicircle. Going from here, right, kind of extend the the x-axis, right? So we have we have this semicircle, two, two, okay, all right, that's fine. Uh, what about the limits on z? Well, z equals root x squared plus y squared. That's the top half of sort of the standard circular cone. Going up like that. Okay. And well, z equal that's this is the top half of, of a sphere of radius, well, two root two. Um, so it's a sphere that looks something like this. Right. So there's our sphere. And we can see that, ah, okay. The sphere and the cone, they actually intersect along a, cur a circle. And, and you can guess exactly what that circle is going to be because if we, if, I mean, you can probably already tell from down here, right? Um, but just in case, we say, oh, let's see what happens. If I set x squared plus y squared equal to square root of 8 minus x squared minus y squared. Square both sides, x squared plus y squared equals, well, and there's another one over there, bring it over, 2x squared, 2y squared equals, left with 8, x squared plus y squared equals 4. Ah, not coincidentally, this circle here has equation x squared plus y squared equals 4, right? So the, the shadow of this, this 3D object that we have here, this kind of uh, I don't know, like jewel shape or ice cream cone shape um, is, is, well, the whole circle in the plane. The fact that we're only taking half the circle tells me that I should really only be taking half of this, this object. And that's a little bit harder to draw. I guess it kind of means we're, we're going something like, right, here's the top half of a circle. We're going to go something like this, right? Um, Cross like that, down, down that way, down that way, and up, and up. Something, something like that. So we're just, you know, think about taking a snow cone and chopping it in half. You're just taking half of that region. Um, sorry, that was a terrible attempt at drawing it, but that's okay. We can see what we're dealing with. And we can also see that we're, we're not in the right coordinate system here, right? Over here for this integral, we know, we know how we would describe this. We would say, oh yeah, in polar coordinates, 
um, right? Where in the, you know, y is positive first and second coordinates, we're going to say, oh, well, these, these limits here are telling me that, that theta is running from 0 to pi, and that r, well, we're staying inside a circle of radius 2. r is running from 0 to 2. So what I really should do is I should do this. I should say, well, this is the integral from 0 to pi, from 0 to 2, of, well, this is 8 minus r squared, still under the square root. 8 minus r squared. That's just r. Okay. dy dx becomes r dr d theta. And I can go from there. All right. We can carry this out. I mean, this is, this is not so bad, right? I mean, it doesn't even depend on theta. There's a pi out front. This is now, it's a calc 1 integral. I think I... I probably don't need to necessarily carry it out for you. If you multiply the r through r times the square root, you can do that with a u substitution. r times r, well, that's just power rule, right? Um, so you can you can do that integral. It works out. It's not so bad. Uh, but what I want to point out is that there there's no reason why we couldn't have done this change of variables in the original triple integral, right? Um, leave z alone deal with that polar coordinate transformation for x and y. So what we could have done is we could have said, hey, let's, you know, rather than having dx dy, let's have dr d theta. Um, well, we also need that r. So I guess, you know, instead of a, instead of a 1 here, we put it in r. This becomes r. This becomes root 8 minus r squared. Over here, that becomes a 2, 0, pi. And now you're doing the integral in what's called cylindrical coordinates, OK? So we'll, we'll actually formally introduce the cylindrical coordinate system in the next video. Um, but really, all that cylindrical coordinates is is you're, you're doing a triple integral, and you're going to leave the z coordinate alone, and you're going to convert the x and y variables into polar coordinates like we've done before. Um, so that, that's all that you're doing in cylindrical coordinates. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll stop here, um, and we'll start a new video where we formally introduce the cylindrical coordinate system. We'll see that that's exactly what we're dealing with here. If there's time, we'll do one more example.